Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thankful to see everybody this morning. Thankful for God's grace and mercy that affords us the privilege to come together and to worship His name, to know that He is worthy of our worship and that He is worthy of our praise and of the glory that we offer up unto Him. May we do so with joyful hearts. May we do so with purpose. May we do so with gladness that He has afforded us this privilege. We're thankful for those of you that are sitting here with us this morning. Thankful for those that are uh, attending from the parking lot and thankful for those of you that are with us as our, as our live stream goes out this morning. We just thank God for His mercy and we thank God for all of you. We invite you to turn with us this morning to the Gospel of John, or I should say the Gospel of Jesus Christ as recorded by John. We didn't have it talking about the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of John, and it's not their Gospel. They recorded the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And we, I don't mean to be nitpicky, but we don't need to lose sight of the fact of, of, of whose gospel it really is. And of why that we give heed to it. This is certainly not new scripture to any of you, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure it's not the first time that I have looked at these passages of scripture. Reasonably sure, it's not the first time I've looked at them since I've been here. But I'm also sure that just as God's mercies are new every morning, His Word is fresh. Whenever by His Holy Spirit He gives us the grace to look into it and to consider it in a manner that gives Him praise and glory. In the beginning was the Word. The book of Exodus starts out with that phrase, in the beginning. It says, in the beginning, God created. Well, I want you to be sure that you understand this morning that the beginning that John <clears throat> is talking about is the same beginning that was recorded in Genesis. In the beginning was the Word. Paul in one place recorded that we know the worlds were framed by the Word of God. This is the Word that was in the beginning. We use the expression that God spoke the world into existence. And he spoke the world into existence by the authority of the Word, of His Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We find that oftentimes people have trouble with the idea of a triune God, of one God who is three and yet one. Now, I'm not about to stand here and tell you that my logical mind can figure that out. I'm also not going to stand here and tell you that my logical mind can understand how somebody's got the power to speak something into existence. But because my logical mind cannot figure it out does not mean that my heart does not believe it to be true. Because the Holy Spirit of God has borne witness of the truth of His Word in our hearts and is therefore a witness to that which is recorded in God's Word. 
And we must come to the, to the realization, if we are ever going to understand the things of God, that we're going to have to understand them through the Spirit. They are spiritually discerned. They weren't meant to all be decoded according to men's logic. Because let's face it, we don't have to look farther to discover just how awry man's logic is in this world today. Man's logic has gotten us into some very, very dangerous waters time and time and time again. Man's logic got us kicked out of the garden. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And by the revelation of God, through the work of His Holy Spirit, we understand that to be true. You know, scientists have for a long time, they, they, they put forth this Big Bang Theory because they pick up what they refer to as an echo from ages past. Perhaps they do. If God spoke the world into existence, the echo of that speaking may still be ringing throughout his creation. I don't know. But what I do know is that I have no problem with a God who has the power to create, the God who has the power to give life, the God who has the power to keep our life, and the God who has the power to take that life as, as far as they're functioning here in this world, that, that, that he has the authority to call that life back unto himself. And this word, the same, was in the beginning with God. And in case you've got any doubt about whether or not this working of the triune God and this, this working of the word was, was, was in the beginning, in the very beginning of things, we find this recorded that all things were made by him. And without him, was not anything made that was made. <clears throat> he was there for it all. His power and his authority were in it all. This word, who in the beginning was with God and who was God, all things were made by him. Now, it's wondrous to me to consider the creation. But for those of us who are firmly convinced that the word of God is true and that the power of creation belongs to him, part of that stems from our own experience with him. How that in the beginning of our spiritual understanding, in the beginning of our walk with God in the beginning of, of, of our understanding that there was something better and greater and more powerful than the things in this world around us was because that in the beginning of that life for us, the Word, which was with God and was God, spoke into us, called us to life. In him was life. And the life was the life of men. Let's be careful that we don't read that to simply say that he was alive. That he had life in him as we have life in us, so to speak. In him was life. The very essence of life. The very giving of life. 
The very source of life is in Him. In the, in the beginning, whenever God made man, you notice that, that God fashioned him out of the dust of the earth. He made this old form out of the clay. And then with the breath of God, with the Spirit of God, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. Man did not spontaneously come to life. Man did not spontaneously come into existence. And according to the word of God, there's nothing to cause us to think that, that at one time man was a little single cell organism plundering around in the ocean. And he finally decided to crawl out on dry ground. God took of the dust of the earth and formed man. And while he was in that condition of the dust of the earth, he was not alive until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. There is nothing that functions about that which is dead. And I, I you know, we, we, we talk about, you know, being dead to the world or being dead aliens, and we, we have all kinds of expressions. But I want you to understand that whenever God made Adam, Adam was dead. Not because he died, but because until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, he had not ever been alive. The rocks are dead. It's not that, that they've lost life. It's that they've never possessed life. In him was life. And the life was the life of men. I want you to know this morning that your parents did not give you life. Your mother may have birthed you, but she did not give you life. You may have been conceived from the loins of your father, but he did not give you life. The life was and the life is in him who was in the beginning with God and he who is God and shall forevermore be God in him is life. And it is his life that gives us life. It is his life that allows us to see the power of his authority to speak the world into existence. That allows us to see the life of his authority to make man from the dust of the earth and to breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. To be able to see that it is in his authority and according to his power and by his power alone that even to this day that men are made alive, that they are quickened unto the understanding of the things of God and the joy that exists in his kingdom. If you've been blessed to sit under the preaching of the gospel for many years and you've been blessed to hear the truth of that, thank God for it. <clears throat> and know this. Your pastor, whoever he was or whoever he might be and however much you might love him, has never given you life. He has never given you life. You might say, well, well, I heard this preached the other day and, and it just opened up a whole new avenue of thinking to me. Then that's wonderful. That's good. That life, that light is in God. It is in Jesus Christ. It didn't come from the man preaching to you. And it didn't spontaneously spring up in you. The life is in Him. And the life is in him and we have life and we have life because it has pleased him to impart that unto us. And he has given us the grace.
place to walk in in such a way that we might let that light shine before others. That they might see your good works and glorify God. You see, it's, it's not about it. Sometimes, you know, I, us old human beings, we can, we can about break our arm trying to pat ourselves on the back. We like to look in the mirror and think, well, you know, I, I've been a pretty good fella. I've never given anybody a lot of trouble. But you know that, for, for, for none of us, that, that's really not true. I might not have ever given the law a lot of trouble. I might not have given my parents a lot of trouble, at least not that they know about. But if there's nobody else in the world that I've been trouble to, the man that I look at in the mirror, I've given him a world of trouble over the years. In deed and in word and in thought, <laughs> And sometimes by omission, you know, we, we, can, we can cause trouble by doing things we shouldn't. But, but we can also cause problems by not doing things we should. God has breathed into you life. And he has caused his light to shine in you. And he didn't do that just to be doing And the light shineth in darkness. Again, I know I've said this to you before, but I'm going to say it to you again. I, I pray, God, that this finds a lodging place in your heart that you might understand how miraculous it is that you understand anything about God. The light shineth in darkness. It did not say that the light shined into the darkness. You say, well, what's the difference? Big difference. You come up here tonight, <clears throat> open the front door, and take a flashlight and shine it into the building. You may be able to see how to walk in a little bit, but you're not going to see a whole lot of what's in here. You're not going to see a whole lot of what's going on. You're not going to see what's hiding in the corners. But whenever the source of light is within and that light comes on and illuminates, all oh, the view is so much brighter and it, it's so much clearer. It's so much easier to comprehend and so much better to understand by the power of God and according to the authority of, of, of him who is light and in him who is the, the light of men, that that light shine in darkness. Jesus does not stand outside and shine a light into you. He has taken up his abode in your heart, and that light shines in you, not into you. It is not, it is not, he's not standing off out there somewhere and, and pointing a flashlight at you. He has taken up his abode in your heart, in your soul, and the light shines in you. And when it does, the darkness cannot comprehend it. That word comprehend doesn't mean just doesn't understand it. It can't abide. It can't say, I'll, I'll assure you, you have never seen light and dark in the same place. If it's dark in this building and you come in and turn on the lights, guess what? It's not dark anymore, is it? You can't say, well, there's the darkness. It ceases to be in the presence of light. All the darkness of our hearts and I want you to understand this morning again what the scripture says about the heart of man. Scripture says that it's filled with unrighteousness always. That it has a filthy rag. And I'm not going to get too deeply into that filthy rag, but do yourself a favor. And you go home and you look that up. To see exactly what it is that the Word of God was talking about when it said our righteousness is as a filthy rag. 
It was more than just something that was a little muddy. It was more than just something that, that, it, that had a little dirt on it. It was not something that, that people tended to wash out most time they wanted to throw it away. You go, you go consider that filthy rag sometimes. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I want you to know something this morning, child of God. I trust you've already experienced it, and if you haven't, I pray, God, that you will. When that light shines, the darkness flees. It cannot abide in the light of God. And the scripture tells us that left to ourselves, men don't want that light. And the reason we don't want that light is because our deeds are evil. And we think that the darkness is going to hide our evil deeds. But guess what? The scripture tells me that the light and the dark are the same to God. And see, that's, that's another miraculous thing about the power of God, isn't it? The light and the dark are the same to him. There is nothing hidden from God in the dark. But what's, what's darkness to us does not faze him. We might, we might think we found us a dark corner to, 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 to think our bad thoughts in or do our bad deeds in or to say our bad words in. I'm going to tell you something. There is no corner so dark or so deep that God is not aware of where you are and the condition that you are in. Now that might sound like a terrible thing, but the joy of that is that, that by the same token, there is no place so dark or so deep or so far from God that he can't cause the light to shine in the darkness. We're tempted sometimes, aren't we, to write situations off, to write folks off. To, but I'm going to tell you something. Your situation is not so bleak that God cannot deliver you. The situation surrounding those that you love is not so bleak that God cannot deliver them. The situation of our nation is not so dark that God cannot deliver it. Now, sometimes we have to re recognize according to the word of God and the power and the authority of God that since he is the light and since he is the light that, that, that there may be times the light and the dark are the same to him. But he may lead us through some darkness. You know, when things are going good with me, it, it, it's easy to trust God. It, it's easy to talk to people about how, how good God's been to you whenever everything's going like you want it to, isn't it? It's, it, it's a simple thing to talk about God's blessing whenever, whenever life's good and, and you're not worried about your bills and there's food on the table and there's clothes on your back and, and you got peace with your neighbors. It, it's, it not any, it's not any trouble to talk about God's blessing and God's mercy and God's goodness, is it? But what about when you enter those times where things don't seem so good? Are you still recognizing the blessing of God? For personally, I think this nation of ours is in a, uh, a dark time. I, I, I won't say it's the darkest time it's ever seen. It's the darkest time I've ever seen. But am I going to quit talking about the blessing and the grace and the goodness and the mercy of God because it's a little dark and a little bleak looking to me right now? Child of God, he is still in control. He is still God. Our hearts have been broken. 
particularly recently. And uh, by the time I get through tomorrow, I will have had a part in the home going of three different people over a span of 10 days. Some I knew well better than others and some I've never been acquainted with before in this life. But I still see the heartache. I still see the sorrow. I still understand the brokenheartedness. And I still know that God is good and that God is faithful and that God is merciful. And I'm so thankful for that light that he has put in us and he lets it shine. And, and, and I don't say this to boast of me at all, but he just, he witnesses to us that that light is real. I remember the evening that I stood at the foot of my mother's coffin. And friends and family came by to offer their condolences and to express their sorrow on our behalf and to offer what words of encouragement they could. And although I shed some tears when my mama passed away, I can tell you now, I wasn't broken. I, 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 I figured I would be. But I wasn't, and I realized it wasn't because I didn't care about my mama. It was because that I knew that God was still gracious and that God was still merciful. I knew that in my heart. That evening, one of my first cousins walked by me and he pulled me into a hug and he put me back at arm's length a minute. He said, You know what? He said, You just look like a man who knows who's in control. Now, that's not me, that wasn't me. If, I, if, if I'd been left just to my nature, I would have been so broken that all they could have seen in me was a mess. But the light that shines in darkness shines regardless of the source of, of what we might consider the darkness. So that we understand that the dark and the light are the same unto God and that he that was in the beginning with God, that he was God and that he is the light and the life of men. And we rejoice together in that life and in that light. We have joy in the redeeming grace of him who is our life. Child of God, whatever you're facing this day, whatever has been laid before you, whatever comes to us tomorrow, or however many more tomorrows we have, rest assured of this, that the light still shines in the darkness and the darkness is no closer to comprehending the light now than it was when John began to record his gospel. The, the, the darkness is no more likely to overwhelm the light now than it was in the beginning when God who created said, let there be light. And we all know the outcome of that, don't we? It didn't say that there was a flicker. It didn't say the light tried and somebody had to come along and help it. God said, let there be light. And there <coughs> was light. I will assure you, child of God, to this day, that whatever darkness you may face, whenever the God of heaven and earth comes into your heart and speaks those sweet words, let there be light. The darkness cannot stay. 
It cannot abide the mercy and the grace of God are sufficient for everything that we will ever face in this world. May God bless and keep you.